Intelligent Concrete, where innovation and sustainability meet technology. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. John Velkowitz here, Intelligent Concrete. We got another talking head video for you today. Uh, I really like this one. Anyway, the topic is why I hate concrete sustainability. Now, please bear in mind a little bit of clickbait there, but I, I kind of do hate what the the term concrete sustainability has become. And um, well, let's just dive into it. First thing I'd like to do is set it up with some definitions. I always think it's warranted, it's important to align those definitions so we truly understand them. And the, and the toughest part about concrete sustainability is there aren't a lot of decided on definitions. There's nothing really set in stone or concrete definitions. So I, I, I humbly provide a set of definitions here. Both of them come from University of Alberta their Office of Sustainability. Whichever one you choose, a lot of them sound alike. Here's the first one. Sustainable, sustainable development can be defined as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Definition two, which I think is the most important definition. Sustainability is a holistic approach that considers ecological, social, and economic dimensions, recognizing that all must be considered together to find lasting prosperity. And this is where I think the conflict arises. You know, sustainability for our industry is fairly new. Now, I, I'm sure I'm gonna get some people who make some Darth Vader sound effects when they heard me say that, but we aren't very well practiced in sustainable methods. We have the tools and we've had the materials for years, but whether or not you look at the P2P or you know this UHPC, all these different movements that we had back in the early 2000s, even before that, we were never going after sustainability and that's kind of what it leads to here with our current conflict that it seems to me that concrete sustainability is more of a way to create marketing, revenue stream. You know, when it comes down to it, concrete sustainability is one of the toughest sustainabilities out there. We work with a lot of technical concrete and it has to be pushed out every day um, and oftentimes the materials that we use, especially if we're trying to be sustainable, uh, don't create the best environment for consistency. So while sustainability is new and the tools that we have and the materials are old, we aren't practiced, like I said before, and because of that, we rarely look down the line on the materials that we're, we're employing to get to this, 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 sustainable ivory tower you know we were working with a concrete provider in the western u.s business unit somewhere around the western u.s business unit they had run at a class f fly ash and their particular concern was for asr mitigation de-icing salts and brines and other failure mechanisms that caused a premature failure or premature compromise in the service life so the idea was to use slag. And I happen to be very, very well versed in the available slag and the prices in the Western US, in the Midwest, in North America. And I, know, I knew there wasn't a lot of slag left, slim pickings. Um, so I was a little surprised that they were using the you know, slag option for concrete durability and as they said sustainability increasing service like which slag does that's a great product so I asked you know where are we getting this this slag from I can't tell you the name of the country obviously but it was over the big blue pond how it, I understand that by using the slag they're going to create a concrete that's stronger and lasts longer. And I really do appreciate that. But you understand where I hiccup a little bit? 
You understand the, the, the problem? And th this is something that we've seen a few times. If it was just once, it would be great. But it's happened a few times that we're erring on the side of, well, the name itself, Slag, it is a supplementary cementitious material. And if we don't look too far down the chain, down the line where we got it from, then yeah, it does create a sustainable option. But when we look at the fact that we've gotten it from the over the big blue pond, you know, the shipping, the transit to get to a port, you know, and then the energy that it requires to ship it, because you're not, you know, just flying it, you're not trucking it across the big blue pond. We don't have an ice road that big. You're bringing it by boat. And what's the CO2 footprint for that? And then once we get to, to the port, then we got to transit it to the Western U.S. business unit. How is that sustainable? And, and that's where my issues arise that we're just not doing it right. Now, that, this is not everybody. I would say the majority, the 80%. Now, if you are that person that is going after the sustainable approach, hey, good for you. And I think that you might find, and this is what po most people you know, blanch at when I say is that oftentimes the sustainable option is the more expensive option, especially when we're looking at concrete. You know, fly ash, we don't have it anymore. Some places, they don't have rock and sand, or they just don't have sand. So you've got to make their own sand or schlep in materials or use a, a waste product, a waste powder that's not as good as the Class F fly ash that we used to use, but it's more expensive. If you're doing sustainability right, it's going to hurt a little bit. And, and I guess this is the resolution, you know, why should you be listening to this video? Um, this is a paradigm shift. Um, we need to radically change. And when I say we, I'm not just talking about the folks who hang out in concrete labs and visit job sites once in a while. I don't, I'm not just talking about the ready mix providers. Ready mix providers do a great job of adapting. Look at the state of Texas, you know, and their lack of type one, two cement over the last few months. They adapted like champs, the concrete finishers, as well as the ready mix providers or the, the concrete contractors, I should say. But when you look at the architects, engineers, owners, Shoot, even some of y'all government employees who are looking after, you know, certain facilities, you know, whether it's Department of Transportation, FAA, commercially, private, I don't care. It's y'all, the owners, it's everybody who has to work together to understand that there's a radical change that we must go, must go through. Not only for, you know, our expectation of how the concrete is supposed to work, fresh state, but also where we're getting materials, how we treat those materials, and the price of those materials and again if I'm the first person to tell you this that class of flash used to get in the 1990s the early 2000s it's gone you know I, I, I don't know how many times I have to, t to listen or read about the blip in the radar will be over in the summer and we'll go back to our old volumes and prices of F ash it's gone you know if you, you stop getting sandy now you got to get some manufactured version or recycled manufactured version you know, you'll oftentimes that it's harder to use and it's more expensive. And that's just the case. That That's ultimately where we're all going in the next decade. The entire world is going to have to go to some recycled material, some reclaimed material, some type of material that's different what they're currently using to get to that sustainable approach, whether we're putting garbage in concrete, using concrete as, a, you know, not a landfill, but as something else, or using other materials that we're currently used to to reach that concrete that is stronger and lasts longer because folks we're running out of those sustainable materials but for some reason engineers feel like we can make structures last a hundred years difficult choices paradigm shift radical changes um we have the tools we have the materials at least some of the materials there are new ones coming out um but start being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And if you don't know what what the options are, ask. There are wonderful sales folk, wonderful ready mix providers. There's us that you can reach out to. So hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you learned that just because something has a, a brochure that says concrete sustainability, they might be blowing some smoke. They might be ripping you off and they might not be doing much for the environment except for creating a brochure that has to be thrown out.
I guess the last part is I'm not proposing something that's easy. I'm proposing something that should give you some stomach acid no matter where you are in the food chain of this concrete construction arena uh, or industry. Academic, you know, uh, 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 the, the contracting side, the engineering, architect, ownership, whatever side, this video should give you a little bit of indigestion. And let us know if you have questions. We're here. And granted, we haven't been doing great on answering comments, but Patchouli is making sure that we get on top of it and we'll make it happen. So let us know if you got any concrete questions, concrete concerns. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete! Beat asphalt!